Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. We will enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we determine whether the stock is a buy or a sell. At the end, we calculate and analyze the financial ratios. I'm going to do this with you throughout the entire video, so it's like we're doing it all together. The company we're going to look at is Prologis. This is a REIT that invests in logistics facilities. Let's get started with the model. They have a market cap of $76.2 billion. This is the second largest REIT in terms of market cap. American Tower is the largest. They're trading at 103.11, so that's one share of stock. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows, then discount that back to today's value. And that's what we're doing in this video. Let's pull their actual free cash flows. And free cash flows are cash flows from operations minus capital expenditures. Next, we're going to get the net income, which is a profit and loss on the income statement. And net income includes non-cash items, but free cash flow excludes non-cash items. Now I'm going to get the revenue, which are the sales for each year. I'll put that into the model. The numbers look pretty good so far, so let's look at the capital structure. The interest they pay in their debt is $226 million. Let's see how much debt they have. We'll go to the balance sheet. We'll go to liability section. No current debt. Long-term debt of $12 billion. That's debt due after 12 months. They only pay 1.9% interest on their debt. Interest payments are tax deductible, so let's get their effective tax rate. They're REIT, so they don't pay much in taxes. Some REITs don't pay any. They do pay a little in taxes. 74 million of income tax. So they only pay 4% of taxes. So the cost of debt is 1.8%. The cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. They have a pretty low beta, 0.98. So the stock moves with the market. It's not volatile. Let's get their current assets. We'll go back to the balance sheet. Later on, we're gonna calculate the current ratio, which is current assets over current liabilities. And that's 2.2 billion. And that's 1 billion of cash, 85 million of net receivables. Let's get the current liabilities. This is 822 million. And that's 700 million of accounts payable, 66 million of taxes payable. That's the taxes it owes to the government within the next 12 months and 42 million of other. Stockholders equity is total assets minus total liabilities. That's 22 billion. And that's 75 million of common stock, negative 2.2 billion of retained earnings. So most REITs have negative retained earnings because they pay a lot out in dividends. And retained earnings is all your previous net incomes minus all your previous dividend payments. They also have negative one billion in accumulated other comprehensive income. Let's go back to the income statement, get their operating income. That's 991 million. Now let's look at a capital structure. They have 34% debt, cost of debt is 1.8%. 66% equity, cost of equity is about 10%, and the WAC is 7%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. That's here in green. We get a value of the company of $49 billion. We divide that by 739 million shares, and we get an intrinsic stock price $67. They're trading at 103, so they're trading at a 54% premium, so it's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at $79 per share, so they're also saying the company's overvalued. Let's see where they're trading at. So it looks like the stock price has pretty much gone up during coronavirus. It's at its all-time high at 103. So just because a company has good financials and fundamentals doesn't mean it's a good value. It still may be overpriced. Let's look at the financial ratios. 
They have a pretty bad PE, a bad price sales, and a good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To get earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 48. So that implies investors are paying $48 per $1 of net income. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To get sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 23. So investors are paying $23 for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. Book value per share is equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 3.4. Investors are paying $3.40 for $1 book value. Good current ratio, good interest coverage ratio, and a low ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity, so they only provide a 7% return to the equity holders. I like to see above 20%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT, which is operating income over interest expense, so they can easily cover their interest payments. And the best way to look at REITs is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on innovative, public storage, and stag, all in the same industry as Prologis. And some analysts look at price over funds from operations per share when they look at REITs. And the lower the better. Stag is the best in this category at 18. Prologis is the worst at 35.2. So investors are paying $35 for $1 of funds from operations per share. Funds from operations per share is net income and then you add back depreciation, amortization, minus the sale of gains on real estate. Let's look at their other ratios. In terms of PE, they are better than the average even though they're at 48.4, the average is 60. Price of sales, they're worse than the average. Price to book, they're worse than the average. Current ratio, all the companies are doing fine. In ROE, they're lower than the average. The only company that's doing decent is public storage. And in terms of debt, they're a little higher than the average, but they don't have too much debt, 34%. And they're by far the largest company. So when you invest in a large company, that tends to be safer, especially during a time like coronavirus, when you need funding, they might have an easier time getting it from banks. So thanks for watching the video. Leave a comment.